we all started doing what we're doing because we wanted it and we loved it and we admired the people that did it and we saw it with these kind of kid eyes. Could you imagine if that was me up there? I mean, I used to hear songs in the car and I'd just like picture me playing them like, you know, on stage, even though I wasn't even very good at guitar that then. You know, like you fantasize about this stuff and to, you gotta just keep that kid alive any way you can. You just gotta keep that dude alive inside of you in all aspects of life, not just music. Keep the kid alive, people. So here we are, everybody. We got Mahali from Twiddle here today. Howdy. So for everyone out there listening, Mahali just released a solo record called Affection. And, and Twiddle recently came out with a new album, Every Last Leaf. Mahali, man, so awesome to have you here. And congrats on the new albums, man. How's it going? It's good, man. Thanks for having me. Um, thank you for the congrats. It was, uh, it was a lot of music to get out in a short amount of time. So when putting the finishing touches on music, like before it goes out, how do you decide when songs are done, when the album's actually finished? I think uh, that's sort of like, I think as artists, most people could work on a track forever. At, at some point, you just have to say like, this is good enough. You know, like I could go back and forth about, you know, a vocal delay or whatever, and you can always add or take away but if you get caught up in doing that for too long you kind of lose sight of what the original vision was what i like to do is just get fresh ears on it usually when it goes to like a new guy to mix and master you know your your ears get a break from the songs so that when they come back to you you can really um kind of hear them for like in a fresh way um and that that helps a lot just kind of to get it to that next last step but like for me for my solo stuff it's easier because it's just me with twiddle you know there's there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen so everybody needs to be happy with the final result so it's basically like get it to a place where we're all pretty happy and then i let everybody send in the kind of like what we would call like their final notes and it's like this is it once you give us your notes here like that's the song is going to be done so that's kind of how we do it i'm curious as you've you know, grown as a musician, how, how your relationship with perfectionism has like evolved? I mean, I'm definitely my own biggest critic for sure. Um, it's kind of goes back to what I was just saying. Like if you let yourself get too caught up in the small details, you could do that forever. You know what I mean? You could pick apart little tiny things and, and try and make them better. At some point you just have to get it out to the world and, and like, have your peace with it um i'm not i was never really much of a a, a very good studio guitarist i've just i'm a little bit long-winded in my playing i'm and she's used to playing with 12 for all these years and you know a lot of it has been just in the live setting so it's really hard for me to get a good like solo out in 15 seconds or 30 seconds or whatever the track allows so you know learning how to like hone in your playing for a record as opposed to like for the live thing is something I've been working on over the last few years and trying to perfect kind of that me, not like mm -hmm. the live me and, and try and get somewhat of a, a more dialed studio sound. And I'm still working on it. It's not quite there yet, but we're getting there. Do you ever find yourself like in habitual routines with your guitar playing, with your songwriting that are kind of hard to break out of? Yeah, I think we all have our crutches, especially with playing. Um, you know, at some point I became very okay with my guitar playing, you know, and it was more the songwriting side of it that I really wanted to work on. And, um, you know, you definitely find yourself kind of, your ear falls into the same kind of melodies and things. And that's why working with producers and other people is so beneficial because you get other opinions on things and chord progressions and melodies that maybe you would not come up with, but you can contribute to and kind of build around. So uh, that's that's been like my kind of, I really enjoy working with other people for that reason. Otherwise it can be, you know, I think there's something to having your own sound though. And I think that's also an important part of being an artist. If everything you put out sounds completely different than 
you know, what you've put out previously, I think your fans can get a little lost into like what it is, you know what I mean? Um, so there's a little bit of both. And so you mentioned you're, you're dialing in on songwriting as you have been, you know, for years now. I'm curious, looking back, what are some of your favorite lyrics that you've written? So my, well, off of the new one, there's a song called All Day. There's a lyric in it that says, uh, I'm not in search of greener pastures. I'm going to water mine and grow it faster, control my reality. I will resist my own disaster because I serve no other master. I'm the jester, jack, king, and queen. Kind of saying like I'm the whole deck of cards. And I don't know where that, I, you know, I was on tour with Chad Stokes from Dispatch. And I was talking to his uh, photographer, Michael. And um, he was throwing some dope quotes at me, like Buddha and a bunch of stuff. And there was one about like, um, you know, like don't covet your neighbor's lawn, just water yours more or something like that, you know? And I just was thinking about that constantly. And, and, and then that lyric came out. So uh, I really like that one. There's a few, I was, I was going through, um, there's a song, another one off the most recent one, um, open house. I'll be up there living, learning loving teaching building trusting always reaching like i like that that's that was a good one and the whole message of that song was cool also i did that with chad from dispatch um and trying to you know off the new twiddle record there's some really good lyrics in the song fighting for i kind of tapped into uh some real shit on that one um i don't know if i can quote them specifically beautiful i was really happy with how that whole song came out because typically i'm a very wordy writer i like tend to uh try to cram as many words into a small space as possible and with that one i was really just trying to keep it simple and kind of obvious and i think i did a pretty good job with just you know you hear what i'm saying and you can see it and that's um like a more deliberate way of writing and i really liked it i was really happy with how that song turned out lyrically mm. Yeah. In looking back at, at how you've matured as a songwriter, as a musician, can you can you think back to like, you know, we all kind of have this conflict with being vulnerable and um, like really letting our, or like kind of our heart on our sleeve in the work that we do. Like you're obviously someone who does that. And, and I'm curious if there was ever kind of like an inflection point where where you really allowed that part of yourself to blossom. I think it was when it rains, it pours, uh, that song, I just saw how people reacted and related to it. And it kind of gave me the like, Oh, like people feel just like you feel like people, like if you, if you write about how you're feeling as human beings, we all feel the same way sometimes in a lot of these circumstances. And I think a lot of us think that it's maybe just us or like we're alone in the, in those feelings. So when I realized like, if I'm just honest about stuff and just, just my little point of view on things, chances are there's a lot of people out there that are going to be feeling the same way and relating to what I'm saying. And since I kind of made that, you know, revelation or whatever, I've noticed that that's true. I mean, that, that really, that really was the case. So I just try to, um, you know, if I'm figuring out my own shit and it feels like I've gotten somewhere, <laughs> You know, I, I'll put it into a song or try and write about it, you know, and maybe it could help someone else or maybe someone maybe it doesn't help someone else. Maybe it just makes someone realize that, like, oh, I felt that way. And, you know, maybe that's something I need to think about or whatever. Hmm. But it's tough. It's hard to, like, put yourself out there so much and then just get criticized. That's the hardest part about it is when people get nasty or mean about what you're trying to do. And, and um you know, it's just songs. It's just like, you know, there's, there's no need for that. Um, but the internet brings that I'm getting used to it at this point, you know, twiddles, not the, the punching bag that we used to be. So I'm, I'm a little, you know, a little less worried about all that these days. I want to jump a little bit to the side. Like, so Mahal, yeah. you've got this, all these recordings, you know, years and years of playing shows, this, you've really, you're accumulating a body of work now, really, as a, as an artist. And there's this metaphor, though, like, on the other hand, that sticks with me, how everything we do in life is kind of like building sandcastles that, 
you know, ultimately you zoom out from a time perspective and, and they'll all be washed away, so to speak, you know, eventually. And, and I'm curious about your motivation and kind of thinking about how, how fleeting life is, but then also creating this like body of work and, you know, kind of how you wrap your head around like your life's work and, and staying motivated through it all. I think for me, the greatest compliment any musician or anybody in any field could get is when someone like for us, like likes the songs and sings it and plays it for themselves at home or whatever. And I think that's what's so beautiful about making music is that it really is timeless. I want to make this music and these recordings so that when I am gone, I still am here in the music. You know what I mean? And I can live on for my kids and friends or whoever just by playing the songs, just by, you know, and if, if, if I were going to die tomorrow and someone said, hey, man, like, what do you want? I would just tell all my musician friends, please play my music, play as much and as often as you can, like live and like, you know, cover it, do whatever. And I would tell all the fans, just listen to it for the rest of your lives, if you want to, obviously, if it, if it relates to you in that way. But, you know, I think that that's the beauty of it. I mean, Elvis is still very much alive today in so many people's hearts and minds. And he's been dead for a while. Like Bob Marley is another example. Like I, I listen to Bob every single day. I wake up and put him on because it makes me happy and gives me the right vibe for the day. And, you know, I know he died a long time ago, but it doesn't feel that way because his spirit and his energy is still within that music. And when I put it on, I can feel him. I didn't know him, but I still feel him. You know what I mean? So that's the motivation create enough music, put out enough stuff that there's whatever, 12 songs that are going to stand the test of time that hopefully, you know, 80 years from now, someone's still listening to it because it has some relevance. Mm -hmm. It might not, but that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> well, if you made it this far, thank you for listening. Just want to let y'all know we've got these hand-dyed, ice-dyed, weird music podcast tees. And we're also going to be making some sweatshirts. So if you'd like one, let us know. We'd love to get you one. Also want to give a big shout-out to the geniuses over at Thrax CBD for sponsoring the show with their amazing products. Got a link in the description. Also, a big thank you to our sponsor, J&J &J Distribution, Ohio's premier CBD and Delta 8 wholesale supplier. Retailers, check out their brands, Kush Burst, 3 Chi, THC Edibles, and CBD MD. And also want to give a big thank you to our local print shop, Franklinton Press. If you need any custom merch or custom printing, hit them up. They'll take good care of you. We got links in the description. And yeah, much love, y'all. Now back to the show. I'm curious what from your career has brought you the most fulfillment? Um, that's interesting. I think that there's a million bands out there that start in a garage or at school, high school or college, whatever. And I think like 6% of them actually get a shot at it. And we, we got the shot and, and we, and then a nice career from it. And, you know, I have a lovely home and a beautiful family. And like, that is just like crazy to me that like, you know, something that seems so difficult to get to, we were able to do that. And, you know, so that I think is such a very proud moment. We've played with so many bands over the years. We're so good. Just couldn't make it work. You know what I mean? Life, life happens. It gets in the way sometimes. And it's tough to make money. It's, it's tough to get looks. It's tough to get doors open for you. Even tough when you're starting to get a, a good manager or booking agent. Like all of that is, it takes, you know, a lot of work. So I, yeah, I'd say that has been kind of what I'm proud of the most is that we were able to do it, you know, and still do it. It's an amazing road, you know, uphill climb for sure. Yeah, it is. So and maintaining that can be difficult too. Right. And, and the, you, you really have to stay going and active and working and obviously. And it blows my mind how much of a grind it is, but then how on stage it's this like vulnerable art. It's not like football where you're grinding, you're grinding, and then you go out there and you just keep grinding. It's more like this letting go and how the two can almost work against each other. And like, like the whole business around it can kind of eat away at the thing itself almost. It's this side of it's super rough for sure. Um, but I think that's why you get such great performances out of artists. 
because that hour they're on stage, they're really getting it out. All the 12 hours in the van and the six hour load ins and sitting and waiting and sitting and waiting and drum check and all that. I want more of my monitor, all that stuff that you deal with during the day. Like, oh, we don't have any money. Let's make some peanut butter and jellies. Like, you know, like whatever it is, when you finally get on that stage and the people are there and it's time to go, that's when I feel like we all really come alive. That's, that's when all of that other stuff flows through us and out of us. And that's why you get brilliant performances. And I guess sometimes it can work in the other ways where it just weighs on you so much that getting up there even feels like a task. You know, and, and but for me, it's always within a few minutes of being on stage, even if I'm feeling the worst ever, I, you always become alive and get into it. It's impossible not to. And if you really can't get there, then maybe you should reflect back on like, is this what I really want to do? Am I really happy in this situation? Because the energy is so, so electric. It's so hard. I, would, I, don't, know, I don't know how anybody could be up there and be miserable, you know, or be unhappy would you say that that your relationship with music is like a spiritual relationship i mean i've definitely had spiritual moments where you know you feel like out of body up there the music just like transcends everything and you're just like in it and it's a thing and it feels very like heavenly it feels very sort of outer worldly um yeah, I mean, I'm not a very religious person. I don't go to church or anything like that. I mean, I have my own views on everything and how I look up at all that. But music is certainly, certainly like falls into the values that I hold that, that make my spiritual side, you know? From your perspective, I'm curious what you think it is about music that can cause for it to be like healing. It, it does. And I don't know. Sometimes it's just the music and not the words. Um, it just makes you feel a certain way or, you know, there's this chemical thing that happens inside of you with the right sort of release of notes and things. And I think that can kind of maybe tap in a little serotonin, make you feel really good or whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's real for sure that it feels like I've seen it firsthand. I think maybe everybody's a little different. You know, there's maybe that person that listens to a song every single day to get them through something difficult in their lives. They've just never gone to a show and they've never seen it live. And when they feel it live, they can't help but just kind of break down and just let it all out. You know what I mean? It like It's like that big release. Um, and that's like the power of live music. Do you, have you ever found yourself like having that kind of experience, but ex except you're the one on stage and you're like in the middle of, of a part and you're like almost about to cry, but you have to stay focused on the part. Yeah. There's a, there's a recording on a new year's Eve. I don't remember what new year's Eve it was, but maybe, maybe house of blues Boston. We were playing when it raised the fours. I think it was probably the encore, but I just like, in that moment, I just saw the big crowd and it was like the whole career like flushed through my body, like this big, like that got us to this point. And I could like barely sing. I could barely sing the words. I mean, you definitely hear me kind of crying in the recording. And it was like a recording jam on played a lot. And I was like, why are they gonna play the crybaby version of this? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that happened to me. That's one I really remember because I was really struggling to sing. And not just fully break down, you know, so it's it weird. Yeah. Mm. So talking specifically about your approach to music, I'm curious what you think are some of the elements of music that you as a musician are most connected to and moved by. For example, like um, space, playing quietly and dynamics, um, you know, rhythm, like I'm curious with you as a musician, which, which elements you feel like most connected to and then Maybe you could answer this for any up and coming musicians out there listening, like elements of music you might want to maybe open their eyes up a little bit more to. I mean, I'm a big rhythm and melody guy. Um, for sure. I've, I've discovered recently, like writing lyrics to a drum beat has just like really honed in on something for me, made me kind of 
get away from the usual sort of stuff I would fall into and kind of open my mind to a new cadence of delivery and stuff like that. Dynamics is huge though. I mean, you said it just now, like I think knowing when to give space, when to bring it down and then bring it up, those elements make a song. It could be as simple as you pull the bass out for half of the second verse and then drop it back in with a harder, like with an added drum element for the second half of the verse, it just lifts up that second half going into the chorus. You know, something as simple as just pulling the bass or something, you know, pulling out everything except for the drums and the vocals for a second and then pushing everything back in. Those little things, especially within reggae, which is the, the last album I just did, are so crucial to the sound. And stuff I hadn't really thought about too much early in my career was just like, these are the chords. What are your parts? What are your parts? What are you, like, let's just play it as is and not like, all right, we've got the chords. Like, let's think about it as like, how do we make this first verse feel different than the second and third verse? You know, like treating each verse as its own little part of the song rather than all the verses sounding exactly the same, just giving them subtle differences. So the song has some movement, you know, and that's something that Twiddle's really focused on this last record and just trying and something I've been doing with the solo stuff now since I kind of started working with Eric Krasnow really like brought that into my, uh, my world working with him and just seeing the way he works with songs it's just so focused on every every part it's not just like these are the verses and it sounds like this these are the choruses and it sounds like this this is the bridge and it sounds like this like first verse could sound way different than second verse but it could be the same chords you know what i mean like that kind of thing so that also lends itself to features as well mm. you know, if you get someone to come sing on, on one of your songs and you just hand them you know you hand them the verse and say here do what you're going to do with it they're not going to sing over it the same melody that you came up with for your verse. It might be the same like music, but their approach and their take on it just makes it sound, it gives it its own life. You know what I mean? It makes it sound totally different and like, like them. And that's kind of the beauty of that, I think. Especially in our scene, like the arc of a song building and then having that, that wow yeah. moment, like that's, that's everything. Yeah. Yeah. Big peak. That's a huge, a huge part of, of the scene's appeal, I think. I'd love to dive into your mind for a second and talk about that, like specifically how you approach these extended solos to the point where, where you hold all of this tension and, and then work up to the point of releasing it. And like, A, like why you think that can be so powerful for the listener to feel, and then B, like technically how you go about that, making that happen. Well, early on, you know, Fish is so good at doing that. And we sort of just watched them and, and listened to them a lot and just was like trying to break down sort of how they do it. And a lot of it is actually theory related. I'm terrible with theory, but Ryan's really good with it. Doug's really good with it. So they understand the notes not to play, to build the tension so that when we finally decide we want to snap into the big throwdown, they come back to the right notes and everybody has this huge tension release it actually makes you feel chemically makes you feel something um and for us live though it's, it's just something we've been doing so naturally that for a lot of years now that uh it's just listening you know i think that naturally there are certain things i'll do lead wise that tells the guys like all right it's time to really start to build it you know what i mean like i'll start going out a little bit in the playing or playing more chromatically uh, with some with some like naughty notes in there that are like, uh, you know, which basically just like gives them the, the clue that like I'm building towards that big wham or whatever it is, you know, and then they go into their thing, which really starts building the tension. And then it's really just listening, like, when are we going to do it? When are we going to do it? And it's sometimes it's a look for me. Sometimes there's no look. We all just know. And it happens, you know, so th that's just it, it comes with playing with a group of people for a long time or just playing with like-minded musicians with big ears. It doesn't necessarily even have to be a group you play with forever, but if you're playing with people that are comfortable doing it and kind of know how to get it going, you know, it's, that, that definitely helps. I'd love to hear you talk about what you've come to admire most about the other guys in Twiddle. Um, 
you know, everybody has their, uh, their like, especially, I mean, Gubb is a phenomenal, phenomenal bass player. Uh, I think he's probably like the most underrated bass player out there. I mean, his technical abilities, but also his ear and, and ear for melody, it's, it's really, really impressive. Um, and then Ryan, Ryan is, uh, he's just like a, one of those like kind of geniuses when it comes to piano. He's got so much inside of him, uh, all this music and, and it sort of just kind of pours out. He, he really has an ear for stuff that sounds really beautiful and very moving. And that's kind of the stuff he's into. Um, and like you know, kind of classically oriented, but he spent a lot of time studying jazz in college. So he blends that in. I mean, I think Twiddle's sound at its core is basically me and Ryan and the way we sort of, we're both really busy players, but we found ways to sort of just like weave around each other. And, you know, that definitely, that definitely like makes, um, you know, something special within the music. And we've been playing with Adrian um, Tramontano this summer on drums. And he's just been one of my favorite drummers for ever. Like since I was, I think, 14, I saw him playing. I snuck in a Tribeca Blues Rock Club and he was there with the breakfast when they were psychedelic breakfast. And I saw him and Tim Palmieri just blow my mind. And one, I was like, I want to do that. And two, I was like, who the hell are these guys? So I've been, you know, and then Twiddle opened for the Breakfast a Bunch and, and we became friends. We did the whole tour with Kung Fu. So, and I've, you know, gigged with Adrian and Tim a bunch. We became very close. Um, and he is just the jam veteran. I've never played with a drummer that's better than him. I mean, he, not only is he technically insane, but his knowledge of music and rhythms and studying and the amount of time he's put into the instrument is crazy and not only that he can play piano incredibly he can play bass incredibly he can play guitar unreal he is just good at every instrument like good like where he could join a band on any of them and crush you know not just like he plays a little bit like he can rip guitar rip organ and keys and stuff like that so having you know having a guy like that kind of come in with us uh has definitely given us uh like this whole new energy and honestly his like veteran way of, you know, he's just been playing for so long. Uh, he brings this knowledge to it that we just don't have yet. And now we do, you know, so it's, uh, that's been cool. It's been really good for us, but as a whole, it's just, um, you know, we're still, we're still, figuring things out always like it, it just it, musically it always feels like it's never just uh done or finished or into a formula or anything it's always something new and every tour we kind of fall into new styles of jams and come back the next year and it's kind of we're into something different you know but that's not that's that's the evolution of this kind of music I mean, if everybody just played the same style stuff all the time i i think it would uh you know get too redundant Hmm. I'm curious what you've learned, you know, from all your years doing this, the most important elements of team camaraderie and leadership to really keep the bond tight and sustainable. You know, that's, that's a hard thing. A, lo a lot of times after a lot of years, it does become a business. And like, I don't see the other guys when I'm not on the road much. Like I'm, 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 we're all very close, but we don't really spend a ton of time together outside of work. You know what I mean? And that I think that's a necessary thing to some degree because you can't spend all your time together because it's like having three wives. You know, like it's it's really just too much. Um, and as we all get older, we all change and become different. I think what ends up happening is this is what we do. This is our job. And uh, this is what makes us happy. So no matter what, when we all get together, it's just back to business. You know what I mean? You know, you just try not to get in each other's way. Understanding that people need their own space and people have their own quirks. And like, yo, he's in a mood today. Don't bug him. Like, let him be that and stop, you know, grinding on him about leaving his sneakers out or whatever. 
you know what I mean? Like there are certain times where you just have to read your people and know not to push because little things can grind and grind and grind and get you over years of it. And it works up to a big explosion. I've seen it happen with a lot of bands and a lot of bands break up over that kind of stuff. You know, the kind of unspoken. So just being like aware of your people and how they operate around you and trying your best to be sympathetic to it is a lot of the kind of how we try to do it. You know, we're all, we're all imperfect for sure. We still have our arguments and things like that. But for the most part, we're pretty loving and pretty, uh, especially recently, we've been very, very chummy. I mean, like it's, it's been really fun and, and really good hangs, you oh, know? Yeah. So, so um, still, still happy. That's good. So starting to wrap up here, you know, as, as a songwriter, as Mahali, um, really from whatever perspective you want to answer this, I'm curious what growth and improvement looks like for you at this point in time. I think understanding sort of like that we do have this beautiful, blessed life. Um, Knowing that as long as we just keep making music and keep doing what we're doing, that we will have this lovely life. You know what I mean? And and just staying, um, you know, as long as we're still having fun, I think that's the main thing that I've, sort of come down to is like you got to love it you got to enjoy it it still needs to bring you there however you get there i think once that stops then you need to reevaluate everything you know what i mean and and so i don't know if that really answers the question or not but you know growth to me is still being able to do this you know still getting fans and, and jumping up to bigger venues and growing, you know what I mean? Like seeing the growth is always the best feeling. Um, and, you know, you got to work harder sometimes to get there. It's really easy to just kind of fall into the same riffs and the, the same, just like how you think about it as a whole and you know you got to stay hungry i guess is what i'm saying you got to you got to keep going and you got to want to uh still get this thing there you know whatever it is whether it's my solo thing or twiddle you know my solo thing i'm sort of building it so i'm just like you know trying to work my way up and get get to a bigger you know audience or whatever and with twiddle it's 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 like about maintaining what we've got and and still growing in the markets that we're not you know growing that we haven't done well in in the past and like you know hitting and making sure that we can get get some more fans there and and just kind of slowly going up and not just get too lazy where it will plateau it's very easy in this scene for bands to plateau i've seen it happen a thousand times and it's it's um it's a challenge to to keep growing you really have to work for it and i think the best way to do it is to put out new music and keep writing and and hopefully you know someone hears this album and they weren't a fan before but now they're a fan now and they're coming and put out another album and you get a couple more of those people and they tell 20 of their friends and you know it builds naturally so we all started doing what we're doing because we wanted it and we loved it and we admired the people that did it and we saw it with these kind of kid eyes could you imagine if that was me up there i mean i used to hear songs in the car and i just like picture me playing them like you know on stage even though i wasn't even very good at guitar at that point you know like you fantasize about this stuff and to you got to just keep that kid alive any way you can you just got to keep that dude alive inside of you in all aspects of life not just music keep the kid alive people (laughs) i mean seriously like it, that is so important to creativity, to understanding how you're processing your emotions. You know what I mean? To just like look at yourself when you were little and just reflect back on everything. And that person never goes away unless you ignore it for so long. It just is gone. And I know people that are like that too. And, and I feel bad. I feel sad for them because they're so serious all the time, you know, and like so matter of fact, there's no dreaming or creativity or like, I'm still such a big daydreamer. I love it. You know, I mean, like I'll 
come up with all these weird stories to tell my kids at night, you know, while I'm driving and stuff, but it's, it's all fantasy related and just like mystical. And I love that kind of stuff. We need something to, to jostle, you know, that loose inside of us. Having kids really helped me with that. I mean, I just started rediscovering all the things I loved when I was younger and that like put so much stuff into perspective for me as an adult, mm. you know? Well, Mahali, man, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for coming on here, man. Thanks for having me. I'm glad we figured out how to link. For sure. So starting to wrap up here, um, everyone out there listening, Every Last Leaf, Twiddle's new album. Check it out. Mahali's solo project, Affection. I got one final question for you, Mahali. What's that? If there's one mantra, one lesson or takeaway from your story, your journey, everything you're all about, everything you've gone through, what might you say that is? Kind of what I was just saying. You know, you, you've got to pay attention to yourself and how you're feeling, but ultimately, whatever it is you're doing in life, if you're not getting some joy out of it, Maybe it's just time to look back and reflect on it and just ask yourself if it's really something you want to do, or maybe you should make a change and head in a direction that will bring you more joy and fulfillment, whatever that is. And I think that's sort of the core of it is just mm. finding, finding that happiness in life, however you can and not giving up and just saying, well, this is my life. Like it would be so hard to change. It would be such a, you know, I know it's hard, it's one of the hardest things to do, but if everybody I know that has taken that leap towards a, a, a happier life just are flourishing, they're thriving right now, and they are the best versions of themselves, you know, and, and they'll be the first to tell you that, you know, and so I think that's it. Mm. Mahali, thank you, man. Thank you, brother.